business partner. Look, I took over Corey, right? Uh, if I wanted Paulina back, I'd have her back like this. <laughs> so you don't want Paulina back? No. Of course, why, why would I want someone back that, you know, he's such a phony. I, I mean, all he ever does is whine. Why, why can't she see that? You know, I don't think it really matters what you think, Jake. What matters is what, what Paulina thinks. That's good. I hope they live happy together. I hope they live happily ever after. All right, listen for a second. Okay, I can understand, sort of, if, if you still care about her. But you don't have to pretend to be sorry. makes me sick. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I see them together, and I don't I know for a couple of seconds. It's over. It's fun. That's it. Uh-huh. Okay. Just a funny thing, think? though, you know, because I think I heard the same story um, once before. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I heard that same story right here in this room. And then, I think it was when Ian got thrown in jail, you practically turned yourself inside out so you could follow Paulina to New York. Yeah, well, Amanda and I had, um, had business in New York. Who are you trying to convince? Go talk to a client, Amanda all right? has been back for days. So who are you, Dr. Ruth? Do you think it's my idea of a fun evening to try to pound some sense into your head? No. Who hired you? I'm volunteering. Because I love you. And because you're my friend, right? I cannot stand seeing you do this to yourself. I mean, what's going on? Something's running you, and it's not doing you any favors. Well, you're going to tell me what that something is, right? Have you ever tried to bust one? There's nothing on that. How do you know there's nothing on it? I bet a sound technician could hear all kinds of incriminating noises. Yeah, yeah, like the party chairman licking his lips as you sashay by half naked. I was not half naked. I was wearing a slip. A black silk slip. Yeah, and we would have had a story if you hadn't come barging in like a wild man. So I'm very proud of my debut as the boyfriend. It's funny, I thought that didn't happen until a few weeks later. That's you. We're working. We're working. And I want to listen to the part again where the man comes in. Why? You know, all you're going to hear is Ed. We need to talk. Not now. Oh, the day things are going down the tubes. I told you I'll talk to you later, and I will. Don't you think that's suspicious? Listen, I got people interrupting me all day thinking that the sky is about to fall. So you think it's an A? I, I don't care. It's meaningless. But why would Grant hold on to the tape? Ed's married, isn't he? Yes. And he's got children. And if his wife were to find out that he keeps company with prostitutes... Not a black male. Or maybe Grant threatened to tell his wife he was unfaithful. But maybe it's a cover-up. See, Ed... Put it away. Put it away. Oh. Put it away. Grant, how you doing? Oh, hey. You know... You and Amanda spend a lot of time together, Randy. Well, I actually, I'm supposed to be at Frankie's shower, but she went into labor. <gasps> oh, how really? exciting! What did she have, a girl or a boy? I haven't heard. Have you recovered, Matthew? Recovered? Oh, from the other night. <laughs> well, I was worried about Rachel. She'll turn up when she's ready. I hope so. Well, enjoy your evening. You too. Well, it's never boring, I'll give you that. Thank you, that's the nicest thing you've ever said about me. Ah, uh, here we are. Wow, on such short notice. Well, they know me here. I'm more than happy to provide the amenities. Yes, thank you. Did you get the flowers I sent you? The roses, yes, they were lovely, thank you. You, you were very quiet on the drive over. I'm sorry, it's just been a really long day, and, and my mind is on Cass and Frankie. Uh, here we are. You're gonna love this champagne. Here you are. Thank you. Well, please, please, please don't. I was about to toast Cass and Frankie's new baby. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> of course. To Cass and Frankie, a long and happy life. Mm. I'm sorry, Grant. I'm not very good company tonight. I think I've just been working too hard. Well, when you gear up, it's difficult to uh, wind down. 
You do understand. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, I'm very happy to be here and relaxing with you from time to time over these past few months. It's almost out, Frankie. You can do it. I can't, I can't, I can't. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Come on, baby. Come on, push. Push. No, I can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. It's okay. It's okay. We're here. Exhausted. That's all. She needs to breathe. Can't they, Frankie? Take nice deep Can't they drop something down through the vents of credit pain? There's no, there's no time for medication, and she's gonna be okay. It's gonna be alright. Okay, baby. Frankie, listen. Bottom of the ninth, you got two outs to go, and you won the game. Come on. Frankie, she's right here. It's all mental at this point. Listen, here, here, fuck all this. Put this in your hand. Get out all this is. Come on, it's the strength of the earth. Okay, Frankie, we have to get ready for another contraction. Are you ready? I'm ready. Come on, sweetheart. Come on. Here we go. You can do it. Push. That's it. That's it. Come on, Frankie. Come on. Come on, 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 Come on, Frankie! Oh, my God. That's it! That's it! That's it! Oh, my God! That's it! Oh, my God! Congratulations, Mom and Dad. You have a beautiful little girl. Guys, you have to promise me something. It's bad enough that I went into labor in the hospital, but I lost it. I totally lost it. Honey, you gave birth to a gorgeous little girl in an elevator. I completely fell apart. You just lost your energy for a minute, that's all. Oh, Cass, come on, you have to admit, things didn't go exactly as planned. No, it didn't. I can't believe this. She thinks she failed. Frankie. No amount of planning could have prepared you for giving birth in the floor of an elevator. You couldn't walk around, there was no birthing tank, no hell, there was no boiling water. If you had been at home, you never would have even felt the pain, I'm sure of it. You liar. Where's mommy? Hey, you. Hey, you. Look at you. You look gorgeous. You do. And daddy. Hi. Hi, baby. If it weren't for Felicia, you'd probably still be in labor. What? Yeah, she, she feigned a cardiac infarction out there, and they went scrambling for oxygen. It was I great. I sort of, you know, played up the vapor so he could jump into the elevator shaft. Well, I'm really glad that they fixed it. I mean, could you imagine still being stuck in there? Yeah, I'm stuck in a hospital bed in this oh so attractive ensemble. Oh, dear. Well, I, I think I can help part of that. Well, what did you do? I thought of everything. That's what. Now, here. Come on. Thank you. <laughs> I gotta don't panic anybody. <laughs> Thank all of you. <laughs> We're so blessed. Not only to have a healthy, beautiful little girl, but uh, to have such great friends. Oh, I wouldn't have missed this for anything. I mean, it really was a miracle. <laughs> She's so fragile. Seven pounds, five ounces, 19 inches long. Gosh. I just want to hear her. <laughs> oh, this is great. Here, see what you did? This one? Oh, hi. I'll do it. 
do better next time. <laughs> Hello, darling. Yes, it's me. It's your mommy. Hi. Oh, I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> I could use my refund, my income tax. <laughs> I'm so grateful you were there. This is because you're a terrific doctor, because you're my brother. I didn't do it for you, I did it for my niece. <laughs> Don't go anywhere, okay? I want you in my life. How can I go anywhere? I've got my little niece to take care of. Congrats. Thank you for everything. Okay, everybody, what do you say we give Mom and Dad a little time alone with their daughter? I can't believe it. She's so quiet. Well, let you know when she's ready. Not the baby, Brad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just can't believe this. She is such a miracle. Thank you for everything. No, thank you. Well, she's right. This is a miracle. It's a blessing. It is. You should have seen this one of the nurses. What a ham. Well, it worked, didn't it? That guy has never failed us. Well, listen, you got my little girl too late. She's a beauty slave. I'll try not to. I'm out of here. Okay. I love you. Love you, too. Push over, you two guys. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. This is it. This is the end of the rainbow. Hey, you know what? It doesn't matter that... I'm sorry. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter that I went to labor in the hospital or that she was born in an elevator. The only thing that matters is that she's here and she's healthy. And she's loved. Oh, well, she's loved all right. <laughs> so is her beautiful mother. Mother. Uh, I guess that makes you a daddy. Huh? I guess it must. <laughs> and that makes you a little peeping little pink munchkin. <laughs> She's having nice dreams. <laughs> Seven pounds, five ounces, and absolutely gorgeous. Mom is fine, resting uncomfortably, as I'm sure you can remember. So now you've got a million calls to make, all right? I'll call you tomorrow. All right, bye. After that fainting act you pulled, they catch you using your phone. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I couldn't. You know, that guy was using a pay phone, and I had to call Judy. Listen, I want to... I want to tell you that no matter what Ryan says, I'm sticking to my story. The night Kyle was murdered, you, Victor, Lorna, and I spent the night together in her apartment, period. You know, for a brief moment there, I forgot all about it. I know. I'm sorry. I don't want to talk about it either. Have you seen Lorna? Heard from her? I got a postcard. No. No. Not. I have a million calls to make, and, well, I just want to be happy about this baby. I appreciate what you said. I, this alibi holds up. I think it's going to be a miracle. Yeah. Have you seen Brett? Said something about seeing the big guy, the baby. Oh, pay on three. Let me go. Thanks, honey. The big guy? Fastest delivery I've ever seen. Catch my little niece. Watch her take her first breath. Wow. Yeah.
No. No, I want to stay right here. Amanda, that's not going to work. These boots tame the West without getting crushed. You're certainly not going to do it by leaning on that door. Jake, I just want to go to sleep. I just want this miserable day to end. If you don't want to load this, you're going to wake up in the morning. Wait, I'm not a dump truck. I'm very capable of separating my work day from... What you me. need to do is talk about this. Now, listen, I know you. I know how upset you were at Tosh. I'm not upset. I'm who tired. I'm just... Who tired. are you going to talk to? Matt? He's huddled up with Donna. Rachel is out, out in hiding in New York and... and Paulina is shacked up with a felon. So who are you going to talk to? Hilda? Allie? Thank you. Wow. So what happened at Tops? Did the Grant get out of line? Look, I'd rather not discuss my personal life with oh, you. Oh, so now it's your personal life. life. Grant and I are friends. Not that it's any of your business. What do you want you to do? Spend the weekend in Georgetown? Your mind is so corrupt. I mean, if you can't think about anything else other than... Then what do you, you want? Sad. Good night, Jake. Look, we already have to work together, and thus far we've managed, okay? But that does not mean we have to share every last detail of our lives. So what is it that you don't know about me? You know about Paulina? You know the fact she's throwing herself at that waste of oxygen? Well, maybe I just don't want to be so explicit about my side of the fence. Maybe you're ashamed of what's behind it. Look, no, I'm, I'm not blaming you, okay? I'm not blaming you. I mean, everyone knows the Grinch bloodsucker. Look, I couldn't keep you out of the boardroom. But I'm not going to let you into my personal life. I'm already there. Amanda, I'm your only friend. And you're mine. You know, I'm, I'm an architect. You know, I build things. You know, all my life, if I'm not... If I'm not watching sports, I'm looking at buildings. Or towers, or bridges, or airports, you know. Man-made things. And then tonight... I saw something perfect. There's nothing like it. I've been on this side. I don't know what you'd call it. You know, I'm trying to find religion for myself. Or God, really. I'm trying to find him. Or her. The big guy. Oh, yeah, he's big up right. You know, I am. Um, I didn't really get that until tonight. You know, I've been looking everywhere. Convent. Temple meditation. I'm praying for a sign. <laughs> the ocular proof. And then when I wasn't looking, bingo. <laughs> a miracle in an elevator. And watching. Watching Frankie in labor. It's, it's overwhelming process. And then. And then the baby. I felt, I felt this light, this, this warmth, all around me, all around all of us, loving us, protecting us. I felt God, right there, right with us. It really was a miracle. That's what they always say, resting comfortably. Let me tell you something. After you've given birth to a baby, nothing is comfortable. Mm -hmm. That's so wild. My trip and cast must be going wild. Yeah, it's good news. Let's see, it's February, right? Mm-hmm. And you cold? No, I was just thinking about the baby's birth sign. You know how Frankie is. What's it say? She's going to be an Aquarius. Mm -hmm. And this is her birth sky, very bright and clear. Very 
suspicious. What's that for? Do I need a reason? No. Grant is like every other politician will shake or do whatever he needs to get what he wants. He's a user. So are you. Come on, Jake. You used Paulina to warm your way into this company. Now you're using I me to consolidate. I love Paulina. You should know that better than anyone. Oh, but that doesn't mean you didn't take advantage of her. Come on. Look, man, I didn't use Paulina. I am not using you. I depend on you. Yes, I'm the first one to admit that I would not be where I am if it wasn't for you. But I don't use you to, to get my face on the cover of a magazine or, or to get custody of my child. Excuse me, Grant never asked me for anything. Oh, would you wake up? He is cold and manipulative. Why don't you call Vicky and ask her? Oh, Vicky is hardly an impartial witness, Jake. And why is that? Because he lied to her, locked her up, and then shot her. Good night, Jake. You can tell me that that's what you want? Someone who doesn't feel anything? Someone who doesn't need anything? You have a clue as to what I want. No. This. Look. The moon! Hey! It's the moon! The moon's your friend. The stars are your pals. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't want to interfere with uh, daddy daughter bonding. Come here, you. I want some daddy mommy bonding. Mm. You look beautiful. Oh, thank heavens for Felicia. <laughs> How do you feel? As if I've been hit by a train. She's still sleeping. We gotta do better than she, don't you think? Yes. You are absolutely right. Here it is, the moment of truth. This is when we discover her name. Okay. okay. Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's it. And Charlie. And Charlie. Short. That's what actually agreed. What a miracle. <laughs> Charlotte Frame Winthrop. Yes. It's perfect. And right, Charlie, that's in keeping with the Frame family tradition of having girls with boys' nicknames, right? Yes. Hello, Charlotte Frame Winthrop. That's it. Thanks for picking us, Charlie. 